how did you determine the number 42 for the women that you help? What, why not just 40? Like, what is it about 42? 42 is about the age that women start thinking about menopause. And it's men, the average age for a menopausal woman is 45. There are women like myself and a few other women that I know that'll start going into perimenopause much earlier. But round about just soon after you've turned 40, 42, you're starting to think, oh, you know, come into that time of my life. And you may start to experience menopausal symptoms. And, and I think it's a, it's a really important phase. It's a phase that is natural. Welcome back to the Empowered Woman, Badass and Unfiltered podcast. Today, I have a guest all the way from Melbourne, Australia. And Nira is a woman that focuses on everyday biohacking. She is an everyday biohacking mentor, and she helps women over the age of 42 reclaim their vitality, ease, and emotional stability. And today we're going all into that. Definitely make sure to check out her links below in the show notes or description if you're watching this on YouTube. Nira, I'm so happy to have you. Oh, it's lovely to be here. Thank you very much, Olivia. Absolutely. So first off, how did you get started in biohacking? Well, uh, from the age of 12, I was uh, experiencing joint problems and that became very progressive. And it wasn't just the joint problems, it was the exhaustion that came along with the condition and that I was constantly tired. It's surprising that I got through high school and even when I was working, I'd come home from work, I'd turn off the ignition, I'd drive home, I'd turn off the ignition and sleep in the car for two hours before I had the energy to go back inside. So it's been something that I have always been wanting to find ways that can improve my vitality and energy for that's been because even if I had the joint movement that kind of exhaustion when you're just sleeping there have been there have been years that or months and long periods of time where all I could do was have a shower and get back into bed and that's about it and I'd have my meals in bed you know my mum would serve it to me or my husband at a later stage and um, so having vitality and finding solutions to what was ailing me was, was really big. And in the end, it was accumulation of layer upon layer of uh, little minor changes to, to what I was doing every day that made an enormous impact. And what were you- yeah. What were some of those minor changes that really allowed you to have the major impact? There, there are a numerous ones of them. A big one was olive oil. Now, using olive oil as opposed to using any other vegetable oil was huge because olive oil has a component in it that activates our cells that helps to reduce aging. So everything I'm doing, biohacking, um, everything that I do is to, is to slow down or reduce our aging. If you saw me in five years ago, I was a sick old woman. I was, I was my color, my hue was terrible. I was going gray, my memory was, I was aging. I was, I was an elderly woman. I was, and not a healthy elderly woman. I was a very sick elderly woman. And it was, and it was through again, finding out what it was that was ailing me that uh, at that point, because up, up to the couple of years before that I was good. And then suddenly I went down almost 
almost, you know, very rapidly. And that, after a lot of investigations, thousands of dollars in investigations, that what was found was that the gut bacteria that was colonizing my gut had changed because I had started to incorporate, I had eliminated all sugars and started to incorporate a lot of fat. The mistake I made with that is that I, the lot of fat, <laughs> a little bit of fat I think is really good for us, mm -hmm. but I just went overboard with it. And that what happened was my whole gut changed to fat eating bacteria and the fat eating bacteria putting endotoxins in. And what the doctor or the specialist told me was, I need to change to olive oil and only olive oil. And that made a huge difference. It's, it's remarkable the difference it makes because later after that, I, after I was starting to recover and, and that took a few years, um, Again, I went down very fast, and but not in that same way, but my feet were really, really sore, and they hadn't been like that. And, and it, almost overnight, it seemed to ease again, and I had to think about, well, what's changed? And what had changed was we'd started traveling, and it eased when we were traveling, which is not what I expected. And then to, when I thought back, I was having a lot of feta cheese in an olive oil blend and that made the biggest difference to my to my feet so it is it's a it's well worthwhile looking and that's just not for me it's just not a personal condition but for everyone you'll find that they will over time just by purely choosing to pick up extra virgin olive oil from the shelves rather than a vegetable oil, you're going to notice there's a, a there's a difference. In my case, it's not vegetable oil. It is butter. I love your girl loves herself some butter. And <laughs> let me just tell you, like I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, man, I because I talked to, and you're basically you're biohacking through nutrition because we are what we digest. And really making those those changes in our diet, people don't realize how much of an effect they have on us. But I, I definitely, I've experienced a change. That change is hard. How, and see, I'm trying to not do so much dairy. Okay. And you see, I, I told on myself, cause I love, I love the butter, the cheeses. I like, I get down with some feta and so <laughs> I eat healthy, right? But everything that might be healthy isn't necessarily good for your body and what stages you are in your life. Um, so what was some of the hardest things to give up or how were you able to make the change? Like, how did you get in the mind frame of getting over the instant gratification of how good the food tastes, you know? Um, firstly, it's biohacking is not just food. It can be mm -hmm small tweaks that you make in your day it's like you want gorgeous glutes as well as literally drop your aging it you an, an NASA scientist was given the um, job of trying to find out a way to reduce astronauts aging because they age very rapidly when they're out in space and she wasn't getting anywhere at the same time, she was visiting a friend in hospital and her, her friend's neighbor was not able to walk. She had a stroller, but she was just able to stand up and she'd just stand there holding her stroller and sit down again. And over the time period that this lady was visiting her friend, she noticed that, that this neighbor was progressing rapidly. And she started to investigate, well, what does going from sit to stand do? And she, what she found out was that it goes against gravity. It literally reduces aging. 
And her recommendation was 36 times throughout the day, not as an exercise, 36 times in one go. Just go down onto the ground as, as if you're squatting um, over a squat toilet and, or, and just come back up again. So any excuse I say to pick up something, just go down and pick it up. My husband reckons my glutes are more toned than he, when I first met him 22 years ago. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy about that. Right? And I mean, so yes, going back to that question that you asked, is what did I find difficult giving up? For me, it was gluten and still poses a challenge for me when you're going past this, the market and they've got the most divine, delicious bakery out there, the smell of it. It still is a little bit of a challenge. But I suppose I have a lot to gain. I know the impact that gluten has on us and especially me. And it's, in the end, it's just a choice. You just say, do I want to take X amount of time to recover <laughs> or am I going to have this um, instant gratification? Am I going to gratify this for a very short time and then pay the price? So it's, uh, it's basically talking to yourself and saying, well, what is it that you choose? And, and it becomes less and less of an attraction because, of, because the consequences are so great. Thank you for that. I, um, and I mean, I, I do love that you, you know, specified more so like it's lifestyle changes, every, the different changes from your diet to your exercise, to what are some other tweaks that you do in your life to really do this natural biohacking? Um, cause yeah, like I, I will say like when I was training for a bikini competition and I could only eat a specific type of food all the time. I didn't think about what I couldn't have. I thought about, okay, this is what I can eat. This is when I eat. This is what it is. And it was fine. Um, but then, you know, when you start indulging and I mean, y'all, I don't know how Australia is different than America. I know it's similar, but I'm going to just let you know, we like to really, really eat all the, the things that are not good for us all the time, all the time. So... <laughs> And I know that there's probably somebody listening or watching that's like, okay, I understand my health is so good, but and it's so important, but you know, how do you get to that point? Like, I understand it's like an everyday choice and I guess more so I understand how to get to that point, but I, I, I'm saying, how do you help your clients and the people that you work with get to that point that really want to make that change? Well, I think that one of the best things you can do is actually fast, extend that fasting window so that, so that you set a time that you're going to stop eating at night and when you're going to start in the morning and extend that time that you're actually fasting that before you break your fast. So that, that over time you realise that food is a real addiction and that we don't need nearly as much food as we think we need and I think becoming more observant I think it's really about listening and honoring ourselves and I think that's what it comes back to if you have a true north of where you want to go and that's what it took me when I was being rolled in bed, when I was being looking like I was going to end up in a nursing home because I couldn't even get my hand to my mouth, it was that having a true north, having an image of how you want to be. It's possible to have the same vitality and energy as you did in, the, in your most optimum time in your past. And if you look into your future and see how vital you can still be in your future as you were in your past then and you have that true north and that total faith not just in your in that 
power that's greater than us mm -hmm. but in that total faith that the body knows that the body can heal and if that is a big enough desire to remain as young as youthful as you can for as long as possible then I think I think it becomes less and less appealing to have food all the time it, it your body actually will tell you oh I'm really not feeling so good with all this when you start experiencing vitality and ease then not feeling it is very obvious so the, one of the harder tweaks that I give it is probably the hardest because it's so not so inviting is to finish your shower off cold and I mean dead cold water but there is a way of making it easy and and that what you do is you leave the shower at the temperature that you've already had your shower you leave the temperature as it is but turn up the cold water so leave the don't touch the hot water tap turn up the cold water and then turn down the cold water because you're still in a semi-comfortable range turning it up turn down the cold water and then turn up the cold water again and turn off the hot water. Now that first lot of conditioning you did, that first lot of cool off, already your, your body, your skin starting to, to shut itself down and starting to get conditioned that there's a change coming. So the next cold, cold when it's totally dead cold, it feels incredibly refreshing, incredibly vital. When you feel like that, and then you go and have a burger. <laughs> you don't feel so good, you know. No. You know what you're heading for. You get start getting a really good gauge of how you want to feel. Yeah. Yeah. I there was a time in my life when I was taking, you know, the cold showers. Um I I haven't done those in a while, but that you just saying that like just sparked something in me. Um, I've been recently, I've been feeling a call to a lake, like just being in fresh water, cold water. And, um, over here we have things, the fresh water springs, um, in Florida, there's a lot of really cold ones in, um, Mexico, they call them cenotes. I don't know if y'all have them in Australia, like fresh water springs that are like really cold or are really hot. Um, but those I love those so much more than the beach I I just I just do they're nice and clear and pretty and it's just it's the only water that it feels good to get out of but I think that's a great way to even add that that in too just, and and I haven't done that technique before of turning up the cold weather water with my current temperature and then turning it down and then turning it back up and then getting rid of the hot water. I haven't done that, but now I'm going to try because that just, that, that sounds like it would be very refreshing. And then after you, you put me in that moment, cause then no, I'm going to work out. I'm going to do the right things. I'm going to have some spinach and, um, other, like I eat very healthy for the most part, but then a burger like heavy like that. Why would I do that to me? Like after all, you know, like I already did went through the cold shower and stuff like that. Like I'm not, I'm not about to mess this up. <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right once you start feeling vital you know very fast when you're not and I think having moments of experience like that I think that is the the biggest thing that prompts us to say oh I don't like how I'm feeling our body talks to us all the time if we're waking up with a groggy head and you don't know why it could just be the uh, the, the oil that you're using, you know, our body's communicating because we're not living as we did 150 years ago. There's so many things that are at us and to drop that, to, to do anything we can to try and lower that stress in on ourselves and we flourish. We totally flourish. We're like a snowflake. A snowflake is formed because of the conditions of the wind, the temperature. There's so many, there's about five different conditions that are needed to make 
the most beautiful, unique crystal formation. And we're no different. We're just a, an amazing creation that, that just needs the right conditions to totally flourish. Now, one thing that that's, I've been wanting to ask is, how did you determine the number 42 for the women that you help? What, why not just 40? Like, what is it about 42? 42 is about the age that women start thinking about menopause. And it's men, the average age for a menopausal woman is 45. There are women like myself and a few other women that I know that'll start going into perimenopause much earlier. But round about just soon after you've turned 40, 42, you're starting to think, oh, you know, come into that time of my life. And you may start to experience menopausal symptoms. And, and I think it's a... It's a really important phase. It's a phase that is natural, just like puberty. Mm -hmm. It's not unnatural. And the fact that we have all these symptoms is a sign of how we've lived before, before that age. And those women that are in different cultures, some women don't experience menopausal symptoms and they don't have any word for it. So it's, it's about getting awareness because if I can help women at that age, educate them, they're going to pass it down to their children. And in the end, it becomes a generational knowledge. I think earlier than that, we're too busy. <laughs> we're too busy at having different achievements. <laughs> I am. Um... I love this, especially as somebody that like, I focus on helping women with their menstrual cycles. So like before that stage, right. And I love that. That is, you know, another thing that you help women with, you, you know, we've been kept out of um, studies for, with science for since the beginning of time, simply because of the many changes that we make throughout our lives. Men are so easy, like even in animals, they choose to only work on males, like male frogs and things like that, because they don't want to deal with estrus. So in the animals. So um, I love that you focus on that and um, are bringing more awareness to something that affects half the population and honestly affects the whole population as a lot of men depend on women as well. And they would, it would help them if, if their, their significant other or their mother or their sister wasn't dealing with such a hard time, just like breast cancer awareness is such a big thing now. Um, this is, and it's, it's very much a natural part of life. Um, you honestly, like this whole biohacking, these little changes, it's making me so excited to age with all of the knowledge that I'm getting right now, like, I'm just like, oh, I'm not going to have to deal with all of these problems. Like, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to, but I'm going to have a toolbox of different resources to really pick from and choose from and, and really help me grow. And I mean, you know, as a listener, like if you're, if you're in my age group and you're, you're hearing this, you know, you have to understand, like we're in the information age but this is really for the betterment of, of you on a holistic level. So this is, this is just, I'm so excited, Nira. This is so cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's interesting what you say about the research and um, that it's most of it's based on the male and that's because of women's fluctuations menstrually. But even heart attacks, the classical symptoms are male symptoms. They're not female symptoms. A woman will go to bed and she'll be complaining of feeling exhausted or tired. And she's, and she's, it's overlooked, her exhaustion and tiredness. And especially, that's one of the big changes that happen as you, as women are aging, is their heart health is being affected. And biohacking can really change that so that we're not 
beetroot. I have lots of beetroot. It helps with our cardiovascular health and so that we don't have all those vascular problems. And it's not just in the heart. You've got vessels in your kidneys and your liver, small, small ones, and it helps with all that. So incorporating a bit more beetroot into our lives can make a huge difference. So, yeah, it's really, as you said, it's about finding ways that really in this era of education that we can just incorporate and it becomes just part of your life. How are women able to work with you and what do your programs look like um, to be able to work, you know, one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting with you? I post, I mainly, my main thing that I do is post tweaks that encourage just on Instagram and Facebook, I post, make posts or reels, just giving encouragement and on an everyday basis. Um, I would love to hear if somebody wants to connect with me directly, they can message me on either Instagram or Facebook. And I'd love to, to, to know you. But the main way I like to get my information out is just by allowing people to get that daily reminders on Instagram or Facebook of, of encouragement of saying, okay, hey, look, let's do this. We can look at the sun a little bit in the morning <laughs> to help us sleep better at night. That's, that's the main way I work. I thank you. Thank you so much for, you know, just sharing your knowledge and sharing how you help and who you help and informing me on so many different things. Now I'm going to start showering different um, again. And I'm going to, I'm really going to try to give up the butter. I really think this is like, this is, there was somebody else that told me that to give up dairy and I'm really trying. It's hard. It's hard, but it's not about the now. Okay. <laughs> I have to remind myself of that. I think, um, I think the thing is we can always have a little bit. We don't have to deprive ourselves totally. We can, I, st I still won't give up, give up all fat because I don't eat much sugary compounds. I do need some form of energy for the body. So I've just cut it right. I do use butter, but I've just cut it right down. I, I tend to use olive oil for everything else. It's just moderation, really. Yeah, moderation. Moderation is a word that we like sometimes. I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> moderation with the things that we don't like to do, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like, and this is not me all the time. I'm very like regimented and stuff like that, but we do have kind of like a treat yourself culture. Like it's a treat. And I'm starting just to pay attention more to what like just the holidays, for instance, it's every single month, there is something to have a bunch of sugary foods. Now I don't, I don't participate, but I'm like, you know, if I'm having children one day, I'm like, okay, so there's something, oh, I'm okay. Martin Luther King day parades that they, they throw out candy. Then we got Valentine's day in February. Then there's St. Patrick's day in March. Then Easter is in April and there's more, you know, there's more candy in the Easter egg hunts. And then May is Mother's Day and Cinco de Mayo and Labor Day, I mean, Memorial Day too. Like, it's just, it's, I, I just, I look at the stories. I like, I don't, I don't eat all the candy. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just like, wow, you know, and, and to be able to like cut sugar like that too, that's really, it's a shift from what the cultural norm is. Um, and you're just, you're mindful of that. You understand the importance of it. Um, and I just, I, I thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and being here and, um, you know, just being such a great resource to have. Uh, so Nira, I, I greatly, greatly appreciate you. Um, was there anything else you wanted to share? I've partnered with a biohacking company that has three products that reduce aging so if you're interested in that and would like to experience greater vitality and ease 
connect with me on Facebook or Instagram, learn some biohacks and take yourself up to that next level. When you start experiencing short bursts of feeling fantastic, that is the biggest motivator to keeping on. Experiencing your full potential, your full God-given potential. And I don't know that very many people really experience that. But I hope to see you and connect with you at some point. Thank you. Okay, just a quick question on those products. Do they make the whole like process of all of this easier? Like, is it easier to, um, with, with these um, supplements, um, is it easier to stay on track with these? These are gene activators. They're actually a totally different category. They're not an actual supplement. They are all natural, but they're actually tune up our genes. And it's probably the only company that's been successful at doing that, even though there are a lot of biohacking companies out there now desperately trying to get there. And yes, it, for me, all the biohacks I do equals taking a couple of these pills. So if you wanted to reduce that, I believe in doing both, mm -hmm. but we can't do, we can't be totally, we can't be so restricted that our life's not a joy. Our life was given to be joyous. This just helps and it helps as much as the whole of the biohacks that I've been doing for me. So yes, it does make it easier. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if, especially since, okay, since it is like changing your genes, that's kind of cool. Okay, can, can you go into a little bit more detail about that, just for the people that are a little skeptical about the safety of it and anything like that? Well, there's, the, it's, my husband's a practitioner of Chinese medicine, so he's dealt with herbs for 25 years. He has never seen a peer-reviewed study on this product and on a formula. He's never seen a peer-reviewed study on a Chinese herbal formula. And yet this product is an NRF2 activator. The company that I've partnered with has 28 published studies in PubMed. Now PubMed is a database of medical um, scientific papers that have been gone through the same processes as a drug would. And to find something that's of that caliber is like finding a needle in a haystack. So the science is there. There is that, and what it does is, what it, what it does is it's like, as I said to you, it tunes it up like a piano. And it's absolutely mind blowing when, when I've, fully realized what this was doing. And I didn't do it by looking at the science. I actually didn't rec realize at that point. I realized it when I felt the changes within my body. It's literally like tuning, because they've, I've seen graphs of our actual DNA. And this, this changes about 500, Oh, yeah, I don't know, 500, 500 of the 25,000. It's our survival genes that these products affect. And it literally pulls down all the ones that are bad in our genes, the ones that are going to cause us problems like fibrosis. It pulls it down and so that it's within its expression down, so that it's not expressing itself. It pulls that down and it pushes up our survival genes that are pumping out antioxidants and giving us that glow. It, it pull, pulls it up to the right level that it should be. So it looks like the scales of a piano. It's just, it's just absolutely, it blew me away. It's like, my gosh. So 
that's how it works. If that's the simplest as I can make it. This is such a nice hack. Age backwards. You know, yeah. really get rid of like you want to do a full transformation of your life. Get rid of some bad genes. Bring up the right ones. <laughs> Seriously, though, like that's so cool. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that, Nira. So yeah, guys, definitely check out her Facebook, Instagram. The links are in the show notes below, um, our description below, if you want to find out more about how you can really age backwards and biohack your life as a woman over 42. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Empowered Woman Badass and Unfiltered Podcast. If you found any value in this, please consider sharing and subscribing. Now go out and be a badass.